Hello and welcome back to my channel. The last short video showcased the addition of the splay function to my mechanical hand. In this video I'll be showing how I made a daughter board to combine the inputs of four of these EMG boards into one easily wired and mounted assembly. Now yes, I know I could upload Eagle files to PCB Direct, wait a couple weeks, and receive multi-layer boards from them in the mail, but sometimes I want or need a board now. When that happens, I break out these techniques, and in a couple hours I have a custom board ready to assemble. So let's build a circuit board. Like so many other projects, I'll be starting this in AutoCAD with a .1 by .1 grid and laying out all the pins of the boards that I want to mount. Now I combine all of the common pins that I can. The voltage positive, the voltage negative, the voltage ground, and all of the signal grounds. The four signal output pins are broken out to solder pads. Now that the rough layout is done, I break it into two layers with jumper points to get from one side of the board to the other. After the design for the traces is finalized, I offset everything for the curve of the laser and get it ready for cutting. I'll be using a CAM5 6040 100W CO2 laser for this portion of the project. Next, I'll prep the raw circuit board material and give it a good cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. I apply the laser masking film that I get from Johnson Plastics. No affiliation or sponsorship, just a place that stocks this product. Now roll out enough film to cover one side of the board and lay the board down on it. Next, run a razor along the edges of the board to trim the film to size. It'll stick really good, so be warned, it's a one-time deal. Pro tip, there are two layers of the film the top protective layer, and the film itself. I saved the protective layer from another cut. Now I stick it to the inside of the rest of the film so you have a tail to start with the next time. Now I use a squeegee to get all of the air bubbles out and really adhere the film to the board. Rinse and repeat for the other side. Another tip that I found that can improve your success when working with this film is to put the prepared board in the freezer for about two minutes. Not really any longer than that, or the film can crack. Now while I'm waiting for the board in the freezer, I'll go and set up the laser reference. I cut the same vector file as for the circuit boards on some plywood that I have taped down on the laser bed. This will provide a square index to align the circuit board to. This is especially useful when making two-sided boards or boards with multiple setups. Time to go get the board out of the freezer and remove the protective layer from the side that you're going to cut first. Align the circuit board with the reference marks on the plywood and use some masking tape to secure the circuit board to the plywood. It's finally time to press go on the laser. You'll probably have to dink with the settings of your laser to get the same results I do on my machine. I cut circuit board files at 0.3 inches per second and at about 20% power with pretty reliable results. Don't be afraid to go up or down from these numbers to get a cut that the film weeds easily. And repeat as many times as necessary for your situation. I usually cut an extra couple copies while I have everything set up, especially on two-sided boards. There's a lot that can go wrong further down the line, and it's easier to make extras now and not finish them out than to have to go back and catch parts up. So back in the freezer for a couple minutes and then we'll start the process of weeding the board. Weeding is tedious, so take your time and really do a thorough job. The better job you do here, the better your boards will turn out. After you get all the big pieces gone and you're just left with the burnt film residue, go ahead and switch to a Q-tip with isopropyl alcohol and clean off what's left from the laser cut. Be sure not to skip over this step as it really affects the end results. After you have the boards weeded, go ahead and make sure everything looks as it should. Make sure that the patterns on the top and the bottom of the boards line up. If everything looks good, go ahead and rough cut the boards to size with a saw and lightly sand the edges. To separate the traces, I use ferric chloride from Radio Shack. Again, no sponsorship or affiliation, just a store that carries the product. Now use the level of PPE that you feel comfortable with. I'm not your mom, nor are you mine, so proceed at your own risk but gloves and glasses should probably be worn when working with this chemical. Now pour enough to cover the boards in a plastic cup or Tupperware that you don't mind never using for food again. Everything being ready, go ahead and stick the boards in the ferric chloride. This will erode away any of the copper film that isn't protected by the masking. Be sure to pull the board out every so often and check on it. When it looks to be suitably cooked, go ahead and pull it out and rinse it off in clean water and baking soda to neutralize the acid. Blot it dry with a paper towel, and if you still have traces connected, put it back in the acid. 
if everything looks separated, you're pretty well done. Just rub off the masking and scrub it lightly with fine steel wool. Now go ahead and hold it up to light to make sure everything lines up top to bottom. If everything is good, go ahead and check the traces and make sure all the traces are isolated. Once you're sure that everything is electrically isolated and you're positive it's not going back into the acid, go ahead and continue on to the next step of drilling in the holes in the new board. To do this, I use a proto board as a drill guide and tape the custom board to the underside, being extra fastidious about making sure that all the holes on the proto board line up with the hole locations of the custom board. Once the board's lined up, use some scotch tape to secure the one to the other. Double check the placement and make sure nothing is moved. If everything is still good, go ahead and grab the micro drills. I use the 30,000 drill from this pack of micro drills from Harbor Freight. Chuck up the drill in a Dremel, set the speed to about 10,000, and carefully start drilling holes. Be sure to double check which holes get drilled and which don't. It would really suck to get to this point and drill holes in the wrong locations. I hope this information comes in handy to you and you're able to use it on one of your projects in the future. Good luck with whatever project you're currently working on and I'll update you when I have more done on my hand project. Please like and subscribe and be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching.